Welcome to the gridiron. Are we in? Yeah. What up? Let's go. It's good, Gidren. You got Eli, you got Gabe, and you got Travis. Uh, and we're going to be doing draft recap, week zero power rankings, and a little analysis of the matchups for week one. Yep. First pod of the season. So let's get into it. Um, Draft recap. Just looking at it all together on the screen here. We're just going to highlight notable bad picks, notable good picks. <laughs> interesting, interesting choices in the draft. Uh, Round one. Uh, the only thing that jumps off to me is bad is kind of Aiden's pick of Kelsey. Maybe a little too high. What do you guys think? It's definitely yeah. an advantage having that number one. I, I see why he did it. Debatable. I mean, I just feel like he could have gotten him on the turnaround. but I think when he looks back at his team uh, being light on running back, and you can see here he didn't spend a first or a second round pick on them. He might regret that later. Sure. But as far as like Brady League drafts go, this is probably like the best round one we've seen in a couple of years. Totally. It's pretty spot on. Pretty much no issues with round one. It's kind of vanilla. But round two, it starts to get a little interesting. We have Tate taking Josh Allen pretty early. You can say it's early, but he wasn't coming back probably to the end of round three. No, no, he wasn't. Except he might have. <laughs> because, I don't know, I guess Mahomes win. Mahomes win. That's it, though. Yeah. Uh, maybe questionable strategy, but... Uh, excusable. Um, what else happened here that was interesting? Again, these two first rounds were incredibly solid. Yeah. By everyone. Solid. Notably, some people... Not taking any running backs like Sam. Uh, yeah, we'll get into we'll that get later. Into that. Sam. Sam. Uh, round three, we see Kittle go. I think Kittle maybe went a full two, round. two rounds early here. I think I've seen Kittle go fifth in most drafts. I have this theory that AJ had a draft plan, which was running back first, wide receiver second, which I think he – Pulled off with, yeah, Evans in the second round. And then it was tight end. I think he went into the draft planning RB wide receiver tight end. And maybe this is why you don't have a draft plan going in. Because if you stick to it, you get a player like Kittle in the third. That and maybe Kyle Pitts on paper has a bigger opportunity than Kittle this year. So uh, pick your favorites. It's all good. But I think Kittle went early there. Um. First time, first time I've seen him go before Pitts for sure. Yeah. Uh next pick that in how many mock drafts? Quite a few mocks. A couple two uh real leagues. Next pick that we're all questioning all of us, even though it might work out as T. Higgins. In the third? Yeah. Basically, Higgins is a wide receiver two on his team. And he's going well ahead of running back ones and wide receiver ones on there respective teams and it's just questionable value for ADP right there and so we all scoffed and pops took him but then you know fantasy's crazy you never know surprisingly that is where ESPN has him ranked it is it's our in our opinion it's the biggest overreach of ESPN this year it's not the biggest reach of the draft no in in fact for me that comes in this round two with Gramps taking Cam Akers yeah maybe highlight that next uh I get it. There's not that many awesome backs left at this point. A lot of them have question marks, but I think Cam Akers has the biggest question mark because he was terrible when he came back from injury last year, and Daryl Henderson was good. It's so, not even just that Daryl Henderson was good. It's that there's almost no history of a player coming back from Cam Akers' injury and being even okay. Big risk for re-injury. Huge risk. Kind of a high pick in the third. I mean, I get if he's like ADP around there, but I'd rather take other RBs. He, he might overcome and take the workhorse load eventually, but event, but 
to start the season, he's definitely going to be sharing a lot of the touches. He's going to be sharing the load. He will be sharing the load. Absolutely. And so Graham Swap questioning that pick. And in I fact, he plays you, share see... the load week one. So. Yeah. Oh, man, I see what he did there. <laughs> yeah, a lot of load in week one, Gabe and Graham. Just... Um, <laughs> to share. To share. The very next pick, Travis Etienne. Ooh, yeah. Um, He was kind of a preseason riser because it looked like Robinson was going to start on the physically unable to perform list. And that gives ETN a lot of runway to kind of establish himself as a three down back. So I get it if Robinson was hurt, but as of the today, which is the day after the draft and pretty much yesterday, Robinson is not hurt and he will be starting that game. And so uh, it's essentially at best a receiving back. It looks a little bit to me like a slightly worse version of Chubb and Hunt where Etienne is probably getting more work than Hunt and Robinson getting less work than Chubb. But still, it's like not a great offense and he's not even necessarily the starting back now. So yeah. considering Robinson, it's it's probably about a round early. Yeah, maybe even two with this new about James around Robinson and stuff. Yeah. yeah, about a round and a half, in my opinion, but we could be way wrong. We could be so wrong. Though. Agree. Yeah. Good thing it's recorded. I see the potential. <laughs> I don't I don't love a pick like Mike Williams. Like again, my theory is just the wide receiver two on a team is pretty much always less valuable than the wide receiver one. So there's a lot of wide receiver ones left, like Brandon Cooks, for example, or Deontay Johnson, for example, where they're more likely to get a larger share of the load. The load. The load. Um, Hello. Jason with maybe another questionable pick here Dobbins he's... okay three running backs I hate back to back to back right here in the third yeah they all have huge I mean two of them have huge injury risk because they're both coming off huge injuries and all, all three of them because Etienne missed the entire season last year so interesting running back choices in this round and honestly TBD but I think all three of these guys will regret taking these three running backs in the third right here. I agree. Um, Very possible. It's a lot It's a lot of draft capital to spend on someone who, number one, might not play week one. Number two, like, it's never a guarantee that a back comes back from injury, at, especially at the, one that's as serious as the one he had. So At the same time, though, I see the potential for all three of those guys could be very high. Sure, yeah, juicy potential. Run heavy, but... run heavy Ravens. Yeah, yeah. high upside. Just ETN it's early. Just catches a boatload. Jake, early to start taking risks. Jake so it's kind of that James Conner just touchdown goal line bowl. Yeah, but if it the... should be a lot of red zone looks. If in the third round you're taking big risks already, uh, chances are a couple of those risks won't pan out, and that'll really devastate your team. So yeah, it's right. just. Uh, Right. High so, risk and the reward I don't think matches the level of risk there. For sure. I agree. One last thing I want to highlight in this round is Jacobs going at the end to Tate. Um, I haven't really seen him ever go this high. And I kind of get it because Tate had yet to select a running back. Yep. But but I think he totally made up for it with his next pick. His next pick. <laughs> That's true. It that that, that nice was team. huge. That, so very Tate, well done. With maybe one of the best steals of the draft here, Kyle Pitts, at round four pick one. Pitts is, has been flying up draft boards, I feel like. He broke the rookie record, and things are looking good for him this year. Yeah, so Tate maybe. He manages maybe, to score more than one TD this year. He'll be yeah, dominant. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I would I would suspect him doing so. Another maybe slightly questionable running back call, even though ADP says he's here, is Brees Hall. Um, just he's Jets. gonna he's gonna be in a committee with Carter to start the year, and who knows how long that's gonna last. He's on a bad team with an unknown workload, and so just super risky. It could totally work out, but it it might not. I think it'll work out. At the end of the year, but to start the season, it might be a little shaky for Aiden. Rocky first half, he could be a monster in the yeah, second. Exactly. I don't hate the pick. I kind of like it, but big upside in the second. Same with Waddle here. Like he's now the wide receiver two on his team, and you don't know what it's going to look like. So, uh, just a lot of risk. He's yeah. that quick open target, and two of struggles deep. So early for Gramps going quarterback, but Herbert's pretty yeah. hot commodity. That's right. A 
It's right at his value. Yeah. yeah. And he values the stack. I think interesting that both Denver receivers go back to back because likely they won't finish as back to back. And, you know, like, yeah, season long rankings, one of them is going to outperform the other. It's a total coin flip. Who's it's going to be like? It is a coin flip. Last year it was between like Woods and Cup, and Cup ran away with the triple crown, and Woods Cut blew hurt. his knee out and sucked. <laughs> yeah. And so <laughs> that's me drafting Sutton. Who's it going to be? They both have huge upside, like, like the picks for both teams. It just all depends. Yeah, and Wilson's always supported two good fantasy wide receivers. Oh, yeah. So. I don't think one of them's going to suck. No. One of them's going to be way better than the other, though. Yeah. It's just interesting they landed squash together. I haven't seen that yet. That happened in our draft. The reports have Sutton um, as the main yeah, yeah. one right Not now. A... But I think the rest of this round is pretty straightforward. It's all preseason, so we'll see. Yeah, the rest of this round seems pretty straightforward to me. Round five, I guess maybe a highlight with an interesting choice by AJ. Um, again, it's a similar to like... Nah, round five is pretty apt. Maybe. I just think... You're gonna have to start Kareem Hunt week one, and so that there's was, that was early. I th- Who was Singletary? Singletary. Oh yeah, Luke. Yeah, uh, Hunt a little early down here. Singletary a little early. I mean Singletary just because like they did draft a rookie, and who knows who's like. gonna take the role. Yeah, especially when down here you can see Gabe snags Antonio Gibson. Not good. <laughs> oh, I think it's a good pick. But for example, he's got the higher projection this week. <laughs> yeah. Gibson, Gibson or McCaffrey, Travis. Gibson and Sanders. It's Gibson here. and Sanders are going to be projected <laughs> significantly higher than Singletary and Hunt, and so there just might have been he sure jumped up. better backs to pick first. Um, I mean, to be fair though, I get it. You want to score points and to have a player on a powerful offense like the Bills. Yep. And the way Singletary finished the season was up there. Singletary could prove us all wrong easily. He was I just. A lot. Don't like the name, you know. Yeah, he's scary. Not a ton else here to talk about. Buffalo's so pass happy. Yeah, and Gabe Davis is a good player, but maybe a little early for me here. Oh, Schultz a little early. That's one I would like to call out for Jason. Yeah, once you get past Waller, the tight end value gets pretty squashed in my mind. So. I agree with what Jason did there. I think that's well. Good. I'm retroactively looking at it because I know what he did later on. In round seven. Oh, but there's that. Yeah, just that round alone. I like it. I didn't, right. I didn't see that. Maybe we can move on to six Let's now. To six. Let's see what six. Is. Um, <laughs> nothing wrong with any Cooper, of these good value picks. At six. Take good pick with Cooper. Yep. And a yeah. good pick with Miles Sanders yeah, here, too. Big, big receiver one. So good swing there for Watson Tate. comes back. He'll be any other call outs. Um, I think Amon Ra to Kayla in the late six. Yeah. It's kind of a steal. The potential for Thomas. Mike Thomas? Pretty high. Hope so. Sam here taking his first running back. Ooh, yeah. The zero RB strat. So he waited till round six, but he picked Marquise Brown for his bench in round four. Claiming claiming. forget that we had only one flex. So whether or not that's true, regardless, we think it's a mistake. (laughs) So either he was a liar or just made poor decisions. (laughs) <laughs> or both yeah regardless sam's getting his first running back in the sixth round and it's which is the latest out of any team by far the latest maybe even three full rounds later normally that's not how zero rb is done normally normally you would take a couple of top wide receivers and you need to snag the best tight end yeah you need a best tight end and normally you'd i get that sam's high on jalen hurts but you're targeting more of a josh allen with zero rb yeah well, I Hertz is awesome. I'll give that to Sam, but he didn't snag a tight end till round eleven or so. He, he definitely has the best group of receivers, so we'll see if that can carry. I feel like there's a way to pull off zero RB, and Sam kind of didn't. I think missing Kyle Pitts, yeah, or Pittman was kind of like a huge oversight, and hopefully, one he comes to regret. I think he already has. I think Sam already regrets it, and I think it's gonna haunt him all year, and he'll have nightmares about it as he cries to fall asleep. Um, next round, I think AJ makes a great pick for value here in Damian Harris. Uh, he's a guy who last year I picked in the fifth round and he performed great. And then there's just a lot of hype about Ramondre Stevenson right now, but I think yeah. Harris still a bunch of value. And so AJ, a nice squad or depth third 
running back two positional player there. I think Good. Harris could have very similar numbers to Josh Jacobs. Yeah, totally. A lot of goal line work, but not the flashiest rush yards overall. And he's not catching a lot of passes. That's more Ramondre. So I think that's yeah. great value. Nothing else really stands out. Um, Sam took Pollard over Penny. Maybe a questionable pick considering he's a backup running back that you're yeah. going to pencil in to start unless you switch it up. Um, Penny may be the last of the starting running backs that I would like to take. I think Penny is the last starting running back except for James Robinson over here. Although Robinson's a pretty big, like... It's a question mark. It's a starting back. Penny's not asterisk. a Penny's just the lead back, and so I don't know why. His asterisk comes with injury risk, but I get who that doesn't? Pollard has RB1 upside if Zeke gets hurt, but Sam's now banking on Zeke to get hurt. Which he hasn't really ever. No. And Pollard. And or Zeke regression, which haven't seen yet. And Pollard to remain their kick returner when they have super fast rookies that might take over that role because Pollard's gaining more importance as a like you know a backup and a pass catcher kind of like a gadget guy so it's a risky play and i hope it doesn't work out for sam yeah when sam did this and then pops <laughs> snagged penny pops was a little light on running back and so i think that really helped pops's team and really hurt sam's team for week one we're not saying how it's going to end the season oh, yeah. but we don't know staff uh, here a good value staff um is okay it's pretty much where he falls jason taking the second tight end to start in the flex is massively questionable. Um, yeah, I think there was starting options you could have taken, but it is what it is. Yeah, I think maybe just to be I, blunt, really bad pick there, Jason. Only because you already had a tight, had a tight end. end. Like, I don't mind Zertz at all. I think he's going to be awesome. No, him for this value right here is fine, but but he's going to be awesome for a tight end, not for a flex play. Yeah, uh, I like Gibbs' deep stash of Hopkins. That's maybe like part of the reason why Sam's team is going to suck is he got Marquise Brown, but he has three receivers and Brown can't even play until the bye weeks for Sam because it's worse than his three receivers. And so Brown's going to sit on the bench. And then by the time Hopkins comes back, Hopkins will be the number one. So just further pointing out how much Sam's team sucks. <laughs> um, Big things for round eight. I think it's round clearly... eight. We got our first defense. Do we? That's oh, a good yeah, point. Bills. Pops, uh, I guess questionable because week one, the Bills are playing the Rams. We're yeah. like the top scoring offense in the NFC. And home game. Generally, teams are going to have to score a lot of points. I think I get that the Bills are talented, like in real world, but in fantasy, mm-hmm. question this pick, especially for week one. So I think Pops, I think this is a really bad pick right here. You might get negative points off an eighth round pick. Yeah, Week one. That's yeah. not the best. Eli had a good pick with James Robinson. I think nothing else really. I like Robert out. Woods in that round. I like Woods. I agree. Um, first half guy, rookie's not going to click right away. I actually like AJ's pick of Naheem Hines here quite a bit. Yeah. And then Sam getting another handcuff running back, but again, I don't know, not enough for his team to succeed. So next round. Travis, I question this actually a lot, Trav. It's part of why maybe your team is ranked slightly lower in my mind than it could be is you're taking a backup quarterback already when you already had Tom Brady, who you spent some draft capital on. Right. I think my rebuttal to that would just be depth is key, and there might be some matchups where I might actually want to throw in Cousins over Brady. That's fair, but this is sure. also your first player that you picked for your bench, I believe. And, and you know, sometimes I think my only option left – was cousins i mean there was no one of interest there was a uh, winston and matt ryan maybe but no one even sparked the sure. slightest uh, interest but i guess you're looking at so week one where godwin's coming off injury sure. and he might underperform and now you don't have a super viable fill-in as it stands on your bench right now whereas i feel like there's quite a that's, few that's opinion based Sure. This is all opinion. I said I feel yeah. like yeah. My eight five. If I felt that way, I wouldn't have rated an eight five. <laughs> so I feel like my bench can get there, and I'm gonna have right. to sure. keep my foot on the gas. Just saying, week waivers. week one, you lack a little bit of depth, and this is maybe where that's coming from. It's possible. I'm excited to see a Travis team where I am not confident that he's gonna have a great week. Sam grabbing Ken Walker. Uh, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why Sam no, would be. No, honesty is key. 
I honestly think Seattle's running backs this year are going to be super committee. Like Homer and Dallas looked amazing. Henny's always hurt. They're going to be rotating him through. So like, I love them all in real life, but in fantasy, I'm like pretty off of Ken Walker. And I just see him as like somewhat equally valuable to Dallas and Homer. So, yeah. I mean, at this point, the draft kind of just gets, it's so deep in our league now, 14 teams, like, Sure, we but don't really know what any of these players are going to do. There's guys like Mostert that have real boomer bust potential. So, like, just with his team construction, I think a poor choice. Um, Henderson, 10th round for Travis. Awesome pick. Yeah, super awesome pick. Um, He's on the trading block, guys. What other here? Matt Gay goes in the 10th round uh, to Jason. I like Gabe grabbing Brian Robinson to back up Gibson. He's locked down their backfield. Um, I took the latest quarterback of anyone at Winston. It's kind of a question mark on my team. Um, not a ton to point out in the late rounds. I couldn't think of a massive pick that I was super jealous of. No, I think these rounds went as they were supposed to. Oh, one thing though, round 12, Annie completely swooped Isaiah McKenzie. From Trav. Oh, yeah. I wanted him big time, Annie. I was bummed out. I need him. Annie, super solid draft. Um, (laughs) Yeah, big time, Annie. Annie did have a great draft. Your team's up there, like top 30 probably. I agree. Uh, I mean, we'll get into what we think about everyone's drafts, but just (laughs) pick-wise, big team. People here in the late rounds are taking flyers on guys they think have upside or not. Some of them we might agree with more or less, but. (laughs) Oh, one thing, Pops. I know we kind of discussed this immediately after you took this guy, but Watson's just going to rot on your bench for 12 weeks. Yeah. You're going to drop him at some point. I feel like you should have taken the flyer. Yeah. Oh, another thing. Gramps, um, I saw you change your lineup, and you put in your 13th round pick of Nicole Hardman against me this week. Uh, curious to see how that transpires. Yeah. <laughs> I just think that's the latest <laughs> – round pick that's in the starting lineup this week that isn't like defense or kicker it might be yeah yeah it might be anything anything to note from these rounds anything stand out not a ton not a ton looking through looking through a couple rookies nice fryer me and sam mike davis is really late here for tate that's kind of a good pickup if it's dobbins doesn't play well Tate either has to start him this week or he's going to have no value the rest of the season. Pending Dobbins, but... Basically like a good waiver wire pickup because Tate might need him this week. I don't think... If Tate's going to have to start Mike Davis, he's got trouble in his team already. Hopefully he doesn't have to do that. Yeah, so that's our draft recap. That's the notable highlights. Um, We're going to transition here now over to our week zero power rankings. Gabe and I went through and ranked the teams and our opinions from uh 14 to number one just based on the draft just a caveat that every single year in fantasy everything is super unpredictable and we looked back at our draft recap from last year and laughed about how bad our takes were and how inaccurate oh. and strange everything seemed and so totally just if we're calling your team bad right now just know that like know that we don't know what we're talking about also one thing i want to call out is that i want to kind of do these every week i think um i don't know how i'm going to send it out to the league if we do podcasts every week that would be kind of fun but um i want to be open to anyone's rankings like this week i combined eli and my's ranking which is why there's going to be teams tied because like i we, combined, we don't have a tiebreaker i just more straight rankings, up combine them average. and some of them had the same like overall value so mm-hmm. that's why there's ties but if anyone wants to send me the rankings any week, I will throw them into the power rankings and make it adjusted. So if you're interested in joining this column, just let me know. Shoot me a text with your rankings. I'll throw them in there. Cool. Let's have Gabe read his off first. I'll read mine and then Travis can give his analysis and what he thinks of our rankings. Yeah, I'll recap yours. Yeah. They're, I took a gander. They're, they're pretty similar to mine. Okay. Um, a lot to read. So- Jason is dead last for me. And as you can see, Eli. Um The main things that I called out were the running backs. Basically, everywhere on Jason's roster looks thin, and it's not even week one yet. So it looks scary to me, and I would not want to have this team. I don't know how he ended up with this team. 
Um, clearly the worst team from the draft. So I'm sorry, Jason, you're at the bottom for me. Yeah, basically you have roster issues week one. Like you have problems with starting depth. Dobbins is probably going to have a slow start to the season if he plays. And then you're starting two tight ends. But the issue is that your bench lacks anyone to fill in. And then your team lacks a little bit of like star power to like trade your way out of the hole. So you kind of dug in a hole and I don't know how you're going to dig out. So you're last, man. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Maybe you'll win all your games and we'll look stupid. But right now it's looking bleak, dude. Bleak. Bleak. All right. Wait, Trav? Yeah. Uh, probably where I'd have him. No offense. Just basically it's hovered around Dobbins. I just think if he gets a late start, it's going to really hurt him. But if Dobbins is a full go, then I think we're completely wrong about Jason. Totally. Sure. But even then, like to fill in for Zach Ertz at flex, he doesn't have anyone on his bench. So hopefully, yeah. If, if uh, maybe Chris Olave might need help at tight end, and uh, and then maybe one trade away. For me, I'm questioning like why you have a backup quarterback and a backup defense on your bench, but whatever. Moving it's, on. Yeah, both those players could right. be healthy, but staying we'll see. in Denver for this next ranking. Um, Tate, I don't know what to say. I just think that he was kind of weak all over. Um, it was probably the Josh Allen pick that did him in and I mean I get it get your guys but it just made the rest of your roster look weak to me so I feel like you're going to need Josh Allen and Devontae Adams to have career years to have a good team this year yeah my analysis is basically like weeks where Allen and Adams don't score 40 points each I don't think you're going to have a huge chance to win so I think you will win some games but you're too dependent on those two guys and then combos of Raiders like yeah jacobs and adams that tends to not work out so well and then on your bench tape there's not a ton of high upside there's a couple good bye week filling guys but not enough necessarily to get you through the whole season trav possibly the number one quarterback and possibly the number one tight end um Devontae adams should be a top five receiver i'd be surprised if he wasn't um pretty shaky at running back not what i'd like to see there um, but Josh Allen and Pitts could give him that huge advantage to push him through weeks um, along with Devontae. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think there's actually a huge gap between Jason and Tate here. Like, Tate is 13. Jason's so far down. We ranked Tate at 13, <laughs> but he's really close to, like, number four or five or six. Whereas, not, not for me. Well, maybe not that close, but, like, there's a cave and a cavern, and Jason's deep in the hole. So If Tate's team performs well, like, it's not surprising. He can rise the ranks. Yeah. Okay. Just just to note that Jason, Jason, you're, <laughs> you're in a dark you're us. in a dark place, dude. Um Okay. Gramps, um I'm just kind of scared that when I look at your lineup, I feel like starting me Cole is something I would be scared to do deep into the season with injuries and buys on my team, but you're doing this week one. Um, I don't know how it got like that for you, but it's the case. So you also have K makers. I really don't like him this year. Um, just too many question marks for this team to be highly ranked. Yeah. So for me, I just say overall, the starting lineup is poor considering your QB one, your RB one wide receiver, one tight end one are strong. And then the number two at every position is weak. And then the bench is weak and there isn't enough value in the draft to go around to have a strong starting lineup. And so I don't think it's sustainable. Like you're one injury away from disaster and not enough upside to win consistently. Although <laughs> I did have you ranked at 11. Um, so I'm higher on you than Gabe is. By one rank. Trav. Right. So he's got an amazing quarterback receiver stack. Um, could definitely work in his favor. Mix in got to be top five this year in my opinion um Hawkinson I'd say is middle tier um I'd say the the big potential he has would be if AJ Dillon can break out or you know if something happened to Aaron Jones he would be a top five back um moving on as Sam <laughs> um Gabe um I mean, there's really one thing to talk about with this team is the lack of running backs. Not on the roster, but of quality. 
Um, benching a fourth round pick. It's probably something I've never seen in the league before. Uh, that being said, though, I don't think this team sucks because I think Sam knows where the value is for the players that he did get. Um, unfortunately, I just don't like the way he went about getting them and what's lacking on this roster. Yeah, basically, my point is you played the zero RB strategy poorly. Um, and it's super risky. And the way it sits, it's more likely to backfire than not. But overall, the value of every player you picked in every round was solid. And so your current roster yeah. construction is off to me, but that can be resolved with trades yes. or luck. Yeah, that's so, one thing. So solid the, value, bad structure. For yeah. the zero RB, you kind of need to be incredibly like active. And I know Sam will be. So yeah. he'll find some running backs that'll have one trade years. away from being stacked. Yeah, Sam will rise the rankings if he fixes his team, which he will, because he has enough value there just as it sits it's apathetic i think weak. maybe he was yeah. he was kind of banking on or maybe is banking on hurts to carry him which is very possible he's got new weapons he's got new offensive lines so sure he's if, got one glaring hole is just the hardest to fix i'd say his running backs yeah debatably the weakest and that's that's going to cost him sure i mean made up for with wide receiver strength to- just not fully but we'll see what he can do yeah Maybe wide receiver one on this team. Um, that's what he would hope. At ten, yeah. we had AJ, Gabe, AJ. Um, yeah, overall just okay. Um, he had great starters in some spots, AJ, but three starters that I would consider below par, even in a fourteen-team league. Like I could be so wrong about this, but when I look at them, I wouldn't necessarily want them to be my starters so not terrible i think you have a chance to finish literally anywhere like very top to dead last and 11th is just where you have to fall yeah my point you have great number ones on your team uh but there's a lot of risk and when it comes to an injury or a bye week you don't have a ton of uh, ability to use your bench to your advantage from what it looks like right now so it's just risky. You're an injury away from having a really hard time, like if Henry goes down. Um, and I think the way your roster is constructed, you need all your number ones to fire at the same time. And that'll happen, and you'll win some games that way. But when they don't I think it's going to be, you might lose some games, like too many games. So we'll see what happens. Yep. Travis, thoughts? I think he's pretty strong overall. I love the value for Harris. Um, other than that, I, I think it's a pretty middle ground team. Yeah. Joe. Next up, we got Chark. I got to check out his roster. Um, Joe, I'm a little confused by, mostly because his running backs probably look the second weakest to me besides Sam. Yep. And he didn't, like, lack the draft capital for at least Etienne. Just... I think that was a bad call in the third round because I don't think he's going to start. Um, Cordero, he had a great year last year, but he's getting older. He's getting older. He was taken in the 16th last year for a reason. Nobody had any faith and he had a great season just out of thin air. You know, there's no reason to me why he wouldn't be undrafted next year. So that's my worry. Yeah. You know, actually looking at this, I might think I might swap Joe and Sam because Joe is suffering from a similar problem as Sam, which is, running backs but then joe's bench is full of what like five receivers something He's like only that back running back is zaire i love his Samir starting White. i love his yeah. starting receiver but so he has fantastic receivers basically i just think like to be fair i would probably take joe's receivers over sam's though so yeah for going not it's zero rb he's yeah, got a solid close. wide receiver basically joe like did you not mock like the running backs <laughs> you took same to their value is questionable and normally you draft Okay, hold up. Woods as so, high upside. Let's look at Sam's team compared to Joe's. Yep. Hurts or Rogers? Hurts. Yeah. Hurts. Etienne or Etienne. Pollard? Chase Edmonds. Or Chase Edmonds. Etienne. Patterson or Pollard? Ed- Patterson. Patterson. Jamar Chase or Jefferson? Is that who Sam took? Yeah, Jefferson. 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 But it's I close. Think it's slim. It's pretty it's close. close. Debo or Debo. Who do you take? CD. Debo she. I take Debo. Goddard or Friar move? Go. Goddard. Goddard. Waddle, Pittman. I go Pittman. 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 
Yeah, for our Rico Vergara thing. Anyways, moving on. Joe, like, corn flip. You're light on running backs, and your running backs aren't that great. So, like, why do you have so many receivers on your bench instead of handcuffed running backs? Just strange roster construction. Uh, you're ranked at nine. Play the waivers. Um, Next Pops. up, Pops, you're at seventh. Tied rank, I ranked you seven. Gabe ranked you eight. Um, Gabe? Yeah, Pops, I mean, I like your team. It's just so middle of the bar your wide receivers are both number twos on their teams that's a massive red flag for me um and if dalvin cook goes down your team is gonna look horrid like on par with jason perhaps see only thing is i'd say you have three of the most injury prone running backs but he snagged their handcuffs he has madison he's got one handcuff and jeff wilson jr who that doesn't really count. When you look at the Niners, you have no idea who their no. handcuff's going to be. But he got Madison, so he helps alleviate some of that injury risk. But he basically needs Andrews and Burrow to recreate their awesome years last year for this team to work out. And likely they'll regress. And likely, I think this team is just borderline, borderline makes the playoffs. A lot of handcuffs. I think it's going to be a classic Pops team that gets like seven or eight wins. And he makes the playoffs and gets bounced round one. Also a receiver handcuff with Jeff Van Jeffers. Yeah, Pops, I like your team. I just don't see enough, like, punch to make it past a couple playoff rounds. And so, yeah, it's you're not right at, like, borderline playoffs. It's not an exciting team to look at. It's just one you're like, eh, and you don't really want to look at again. <laughs> Next Luke. up, Luke, tied for seven. Maybe I'll go first here. Go for it. Um, Similar to Pops, but I think just more <sighs> solid over – no, I ranked you one lower. Solid, lacks the punch to go in the playoffs. Basically, you're just lacking star power outside of Cup. Like, just the kind of name brand recognition of guys you trust fully. I'm, I don't see it there. Same with on the bench. So I can see your team competing super close in a lot of games, but then just kind of like losing close games and not quite having enough. Yeah, I mean... I don't have anything else to add, really. You have the Denver running back receiver stack. I don't think that's terrific, just on, like, potential upside for a team. Um, but I like all your players. They're yeah. just average. Yeah, no major faults. I just think someone – your team is less likely to have players scoring, like, 30 or 40 points. And if someone pulls off a big week against you, you're not going to be able to match that that firepower just really one player that's screaming at me would be cup and then you know the other ones are pretty middle ground yeah yep next up is trav i ranked him at four gabe ranked him at six gabe uh the main reason why trav is a little lower for me is because his wide receiver depth is terrible agreed um godwin huge question mark on what he's going to do week one or even like weeks one through four. Um, and I love his running backs, but they are the two most injury prone dudes so far in the league, CMC and Barkley. They haven't done anything for two years. Um, if they hit their highs from two years ago, Trav is going to do great. If they're only okay and his receivers are just where they are now, which is bad, Trav is going to finish pretty low. Yeah, for me, I think there's a legit chance for, like, a runaway season. It's not surprising to me if this team finishes first, doesn't lose very many games. But basically, almost every single player you're starting, you could put a question mark there. Like, Brady, super old. Zeke, is he losing his touch? Barkley, pretty much every single player. Kirk, is he that good? They have potential, all of them huge potential, but they also have huge potential to drop off and then the roster construction with your bench doesn't support you very well if you face a catastrophic injury so agreed i think you guys put it really well my team would just be the definition of high risk high reward yeah it is high risk high reward and so generally i think that comes to bite you in fantasy when it's this early in the season there's a chance something bad's going to happen to your team at some point it's crazy last year you basically had well you had Ridley, right? Ridley went left your team. If that same second, style yeah. of – if a second rounder for you left yeah, your team. Yeah, he just went crazy. If you lost a second rounder, <laughs> you'd be in big trouble. So mm-hmm. just 
I think you're going to start the season strong, but I think not enough sustainability. Yeah, I just look at it from last year, and if you look at the rounds that I got guys to drop, I mean, I got Zeke in the third. He was originally my fifth pick last year going in the first uh, you get Barkley, who's originally a first-round pick, uh, 101 a couple years back. Um, he's coming out on a contract here. Pretty confident in that. Reports say he looks great. Um, McCaffrey, they got everything invested in him. Highest-paid running back in the league. I think they're going to milk him. Panthers got a lot to prove. Um, Elliott going to be catching a lot of those passes, hopefully, um, with Gallup going. So uh, Waller going in the third last year, getting him in the fifth, dropping two rounds. I'll take it every time. So Kirk, he's kind of kind of that question mark. Um, see what he can do over there. Hopefully going in the slot and just all over the field. Uh, hopefully Jags will be playing from behind a lot. And Godwin, another big question mark. Um, hopefully – just breaks out and he's not as hurt as he could be. Yeah. Basically your team has two narratives. Either they all underperform and that's why they're all kind of falling in drafts and you think they're steals or they all hit their highs and your team crushes. So we'll see what happens. Uh, next we have Aiden Leberge. I ranked him six, Gabe ranked him four. Um, I just put high risk playoff caliber team. So you're a running back injury away from your team kind of falling apart. That and Brees is unknown. Williams, Mike Williams could regress. Juju is totally unknown. So you have a chance for a lot of players to underperform. You also have a chance for big potential. And my my comment to you is you're wasting, straight up wasting three bench spots. And so your team has a lot of risk and there's three bench spots there. I'd advise you to alleviate some of that risk with your bench. Maybe something you should have done in the draft. So maybe instead of being a huge high risk playoff caliber team, you could have just been like, playoff caliber team in my mind so maybe fix that bench up Aiden yeah I mean my justification for rank four was because I see this team just winning right out of the gate um for no other reason than I think Russell's gonna crush Connor has no competition and Mike Williams and Juju are gonna go ham um and looking at the rest of the teams so far that we've ranked like I have massive question marks for at least like some part of their roster, but Aiden, I feel solid about everything. So I think he's going to be able to get by at least to start. And maybe like once other teams are like starting to hit their highs, he'll tail off. Um, but for now, I think he's going to start off pretty high. Yeah. That's why I think Aiden's a playoff caliber team for sure for our league, the way it sits. Good all around team. Uh, definitely a scary matchup week one. Good job, Aiden. Except me. Uh, at third, I ranked myself third. Gabe ranked me fifth. Maybe Gabe, you'll go first here. Yeah, I mean, I like Eli's team across the board. Um, he does have question marks because there's at least four players on his team that are like in fresh situations. Uh, McLaurin, new quarterback, Bateman, first year being the number one. Last year, you wouldn't be starting him because I know I had him all year. Sutton, new quarterback in Russell, is he going to be the one? TBD. And Damian Pierce, straight up rookie running back. Like, he's got all the opportunity in the world, but it's no guarantee that he's going to be able to start for Eli any week this season. So I really like the team. I know that at some point this team is going to go up. I just want to see it before I believe it. What I wrote about my team, I ranked myself third, is I think it's one of the more – resilient to injury teams at this point i feel like every every single year like you lose important players and i think my bench has people that are adequate fill-ins for bye weeks and if people go down and i think that's the real strength so i think maybe my starting lineup lacks a tiny bit of punch especially when you look at like a quarterback like winston or a tight end like Knox. but their ceiling is pretty high and it's i just think roster construction wise one of the more balanced teams and i think that'll be a strength come the end of the year um but like gabe said a lot of a lot of these players are stories and not proven so we got to see them prove their situations before it's actually worth being ranked that high yeah trav yeah pretty much agree i just like i think you spotted out the holes and the quarterback and the tight end probably having some boomer bust weeks but other than that there's a lot to be excited about yep any any i have you third I love your team. I mean, Jonathan Taylor and Mahomes will win you weeks. 
and Tyreek, he'll go off for 50 points like once or twice this year and 30 for like six other games. So you're going to win weeks with massive scores. And that's kind of why I love this team. Um, you have Clyde too, just riding your bench week one. I mean, I don't know about that, but I don't see any weakness in this team. And your bench has great players, just all around amazing. Yep. I guess I wrote solid team without many holes, good bench depth. You have really good star power. I think you have like Stevenson and Clyde, I think are going to be your pivot points on your team. If they combined are better than expected, then your team's going to be fantastic. And if they're worse than expected, your team's just going to be good. So right now it looks great. And you're either going to be even better than great or just slightly worse than great. So I think you're a lock for the playoffs and, I think you crushed this draft, Annie. It's awesome to see. Yeah, it looks like a playoff team. I have Mooney in another league myself. Um, just the only question mark I would say is a tight end. Other than that, it looks like a well-balanced team. Um, At number one, there's two teams. The load, Gabe came up first. I guess I'll do mine first. I ranked Gabe number one. Um, Said the meteor fall for Kamara. Gabe gave a huge boost to start. I think Kamara was a huge steal at 13, and then he followed it up with style. And my point why he's number one is that he has the hardest hitting week one roster, and then he has incredible depth at wide receiver. He has Michael Thomas and DeAndre Hopkins sitting on his bench. And then my other point is that his roster construction is really well balanced with a third running back, starting running back as the flex right now. You have his handcuff in your IR slot. You have receivers to fill in and then you have high upside guys and Dolbert and Pacheo so you did everything you protected your team and took high upside shots in the dark and then basically I said if Lance runs for 600 yards or more then it's over and your team's going to be unstoppable so um powerful team my my number one team this year I think yeah I mean obviously Homer here talking about my own team but this draft went almost perfectly for me. I couldn't really see anywhere that I missed out on anyone that I really wanted to get. Um, and hopefully by the time midseason rolls around, I'll have to be choosing between like Michael Thomas, DK and Metcalf all hitting their highs. Like who do I start? I can only start two out of the three. Like that's a good decision to have. And hopefully that's the one I have to make. Yep. Trav. Looks good. It's going to be a hard team to beat. And then tied for number one, I had him at two, was <clears throat> Kayla's same deviled egg. Um, <clears throat> I said pretty much no flaws. Your starting lineup punches hard. Your bench is slow growing, but potentially elite. It pretty much has the look of a championship team from top to bottom. My only, my only negative point is that if Eckler Chubb went down, early you would have a gaping hole you don't have a capable rb3 and so that's why i ranked you below gabe because chances are they will miss games and they will definitely have at least a bye week and so i think you have enough depth on your bench if you trade or waiver or luck your way into a fill-in at rb3 then you're my new number one seed yeah for sure i just look at week one and i think this team is going to outscore every other team in the league um lamar Amazing. Amazing Eckler, matchups. Great. I mean, AFC West, high caliber running back. Chubb is going to get the load for at least the first 11 weeks because they're going to run first without Deshaun. I mean, the only hole I see is this tight end being unproven. But as I said in this write-up, the last time he was seriously on the field, he was amazing. So hopefully he can recapture that and his team is just lights out. Yep. And that's it. That concludes our power rankings. Uh, I think now we're going to jump back and do a quick recap of the matchups in week one. Yeah, we'll just throw in our predictions, and then that'll be it for today. How do we get to matchups here? League home? Uh, fantasy cast, dude. Ah, there you, you gotta go. got to watch that commercial first. Oh, no, you, you no, for you. We're good. I All guess right. my team's up first because it's my account, and we'll look at me versus Jason. Um. 
I'm projected below Jason. I'm projected the lowest this week. Um, I, I don't exactly know why I'm projected the lowest, but I think problem here in Jason's team with Dobbins and then another issue with double tight end. So I guess I'd say, I think I edged Jason out here. Yeah. I'm going to double that sentiment. Um, Eli's going to win this week. Helps that my biggest question mark quarterback has a fantastic matchup. So that, that really helps. Um, Tate versus Joe. Joe ranked comfortably above five points above. Um, This one I have to give to Joe just because that Rams defense that you have in Tate is going to score you negative points and you just can't fly with that. Yeah, that and I a little bit question the use of Adams and Jacobs against uh, the Chargers. It, like, it's going to be a high-scoring game, but it's just a lot to put on the the Chargers. And then I don't know how Amari Cooper is going to look with Brissett. It's just a couple too many question marks, whereas I think Chase tears up the Steelers and I think Debo tears up the Bears. And Etienne has a great first game versus Washington. So even though I question Joe's pick of him, week one, it looks pretty juicy. And then same with Aaron Rodgers versus Minnesota, those are always high scoring games. So another 2 0 prediction for Joe. Yep. Next up, Aiden versus Trav. I think I might divulge. I'm going Aiden on this. Travis's receivers. Listen, Godwin might just get five snaps or he might get nothing. Um, and he has no one to plug and play. So if he has to start Kirk plus some random wide receiver off his bench or off the waiver, Aiden's going to take this easy. Yeah, um, this is a really close matchup. Honestly, hard to predict a winner. Russell, I think, likely shreds the Hawks. I think Connor gets some touchdowns against Kansas, but I don't think Brees Hall performs very well against the Ravens. Um, and so just based on that, Sam's or Travis's running back strength, if they pop, they're going to potentially score Trav 90 points week one. And it's hard to face three. Uh, who, who are you calling for? I'm calling it for Trav, but I think it's the closest call. And it comes down to Brees Hall against the Ravens for me. Travis, what do you think? Feel good. 60 40. I just, uh, I'm really worried about Russell just having a monster game and just wiping me out. It's a true toss up. Next up is All Wives and the Load. Uh, I'm just going to say I think I'm going to win this one, but I don't think so. Yeah, this one has the biggest difference in projected points. Gabe projected the biggest gap above. A lot of that, though, coming from Antonio Gibson being projected at 19 points. He's projected above Christian McCaffrey, which is a little crazy to me. Um, But if you kind of compare player to player, <clears throat> pretty much – Every single player except maybe Herbert versus Landscape wins. So it's if Herbert outscores Lance by 50, sure. But other than that, I don't see Gramps making it through. Yep. 2 0 on this one. And then is this is this last up? No, we got a few more. Yeah, let's um get through these. <clears throat> Tolt Demons versus uh Luke. Um super close projection. I'm gonna call it for pops. I'm also going to call it for Pops. I think Pops as players pop, and I think Luke's don't. That's pretty much it. Pops, you're going to pop. Yep. Uh, this, Annie versus Kayla. This and, is going to be the closest game, I think. Yeah, Annie, you should start Clyde over Ramondre. We don't know what Ramondre's workload is going to be like. At or all. Isaiah McKenzie. Um, yeah. But and for that reason, I'm gonna call it for Kayla. Like yeah. Yeah, right now I'm calling it for Kayla. But and if you threw Clyde into your bench, I think it becomes really neck and neck. So start Clyde. You drafted him to play. Blame. Last one. And then uh Sam versus Eli's nightmare, AJ. And this one is interesting to me. Um, Sam is starting questionable Edmonds and Pollard and Fryermuth. Uh oh, C D and Pollard. Interesting. And um, C D and Pollard against a pretty tough Bucks defense. 
AJ's going to get his first win in the league week one. Yeah. Well, Kyler's going to get a ton of points versus Kansas City. Derrick Henry is likely going to shred the crap out of the Giants. Mike Evans always gets touchdowns. George Kittle has a soft matchup versus Chicago. Um, AJ, I'd recommend maybe you don't play the Chargers D yeah. ever this year. I think they're going to be in too many high-scoring games. So don't do that, AJ. But um, Other than that, I yeah, think Sam, gonna Sam's going to start with the loss. It's going to continue with losses for <laughs> Sam. We can only dream. All right. Is that it? I think that's it. All right. That's it for us. Eli, Gabe, and Trav, and this has been the Gridiron.